Hello to all, welcome to the channel GeoGuru. In this video, we are going to learn how we can estimate the number of consecutive dry days using the Google Earth Engine. And for that, we are going to utilize a very important and a very good tool in the Earth Engine that is iTrade function. So let's begin. So this is our uh, Google Earth Engine code editor. So initially, I'm going to tell how the code works and later on, we will work uh, learn how the algorithms implement so what we have done we have uh, used the chubs daily data set and filter it for a specific year and we have applied uh, iterate function in which uh, iterate function utilizes two values that means a current and the previous one so at the initial stage uh, the previous value will be a black image with a zero value and at the first step, a mask image will be created using the remap function in which if the rainfall is zero over a specific area, it will become as one, otherwise zero. That means it is a Boolean map. Later on, on the second, uh, on the second step, it will create a last image but that is nothing but the previous image. And in the first step, it will become the zero image. And later on, at the end, it will give you an image uh, which will uh, the addition of mass plus last Im last image so if you click on the run uh, and see uh, what this kind of algorithm produce so if i click on the inspector tool and over every pixel any pixel it gives me number of consecutive dry days in the year of 2017 that means this pixels have a number of maximum 58 consecutive dry days that means no rainfall has occurred in 58 days consecutively so uh, with this map we can see that uh, uh, specifically in india in the northern part there are uh, pixel with a lesser value range that means in the northern part of india there are very uh, less consecutive dry days that means 41 or 38 etc but uh, the more prominent or the drought prone area of the india like for an example this is the gujarat kach area uh, which are more, more prone to drought uh, drought can have a, have a have a significant number of consecutive dry days like 153 and if you go to the like uh, deserted areas for example Egypt, Lib uh, Egypt, Libya or the Saudi Arabia we can see a red line that means this pixel have an approximately 342 of consecutive dry days that means over a year this particular pixel has experience of consecutive no rainfall of 342 days. So this kind of analysis is very much useful for a, for a climate change analysis. And not only that, if uh, we are going to utilize any other type of, uh, for an example, temperature data set or uh, rainfall data set, if you want to uh, learn how the it will impact the area uh, with the help of the previous image for an example an image collection when you use the google earth engine using the map function you can utilize a sing, uh, single image in every and each and every step but the, using the iterate function you can utilize that image also but also the uh, image uh, resultant from the previous step so in order to understand the algorithm uh, as ex uh, prepare a excel file in which uh, we can try we try to understand how this algorithm works and if you are able to understand the algorithm or the iterate function you can apply this function in any of your uses so for an example this is an image and these are the separate uh, uh, 16 pixels that means four in the horizontal and four in the vertical so this is the day one in the day one uh, this pixels have an experience a rainfall of like 3 mm 23 mm this pixel is 5 mm and these four pixels have experienced a 0 mm of rainfall okay so in the first step the present day image will be this and in the same step uh, the previous day image will be the zero image because uh, at the initial of our uh, code we are creating a blank image with a zero constant value after that it will create a mask image so as i told you mask image is a boolean image in which if the rainfall value is uh, zero or you can define any threshold like uh, 2 mm or lesser than 1 mm 
So in this case, we are defining at the zero. That means if the rainfall hasn't occurred on towards that pic that pixel, that will become as one. And if the rainfall has occurred, that becomes zero. So that is why you can see that in this boolean image, there are only four values one 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 because over these four pixels there are no rainfall. And at the end, we will get the updated uh, image in which. Uh, if you go to the formula, because this Excel sheet is designed in such a way that it will replicate the algorithm which we had just shown in the Google Earth region. So, this particular pixel is nothing but the multiplication and addition of these two pixels. Okay. So, at the end of this first step, we will get an image in which the pixels with the having a zero rainfall will give the value as one. Now, in the next step, in the next step, that means the day two. We will get the present day and in this day we can see that all those four pixels which were experiences no rainfall in the previous day it is the same case that means no rainfall but additional pixels are also there which are receiving no rainfall okay and in that step uh, the previous day image will become the updated that means the result of this previous step will become the uh, previous day of this particular step and in the very first step, it was the zero constant image. Okay, so now the previous day is nothing but the uh, it is it is a boolean image. Okay, so actually it's not a boolean image, but a uh, integer image in which it will represent the number of consecutive dry days in the previous steps. So uh, it will replicate the one one one, and the mask image is nothing but the boolean image where we will receiving no rainfall in the present day. So in the present day, we are receiving no rainfall in this five pixels. So that is why this is the one value uh, in this particular pixels. And after that, we will get an updated image. So updated image will give you the value of over that pixel. Uh, that means for how many consecutive dry days has been occurred till that step. So we can see this over these pixels, there are values as two because at the end of the step two, at the end of the day two, these four pixels getting the value two means uh, these pixels experiencing dry days of uh, consecutive two days. But this particular pixel is uh, getting the value one because this pixel has experienced uh, only one day of consecutive dry day. Okay, so now this image will become the previous day image in the step three so in the step three this is the same kit scenario like means um, these four pixels have experienced the zero rainfall so this is the uh, present day rainfall image this is the previous day um, result image and this is the mask as i told you mask is nothing but the boolean image of the present day so in this case also you can see there are only four pixels in the downward side which experiencing no rainfall and if the updated images now you can see that these four pixels are experiencing the value three because over all of those th uh, four pixels from the past continuous three days it experienced no rainfall but this pixel becomes zero because now rainfall has occurred over this pixel that is why this become zero so likewise if you go to the last step of the image okay so this is the uh, uh, last day image uh, in which we can see that rainfall has not occurred over these two and this one pixels and over this pixel the rainfall has occurred so in the previous day we can see that this is the four because these three pixels haven't occur any rainfall uh, over the past four days and we can see that this one is also there because in the previous day this particular pixel is also experienced no rainfall so this is the mask image is the boolean image and this is the resultant image now we can see this so this particular two pixels have experienced no rainfall in the uh, Mac, uh, previous five days. Okay, so uh, at the end of the each step, we will get an updated image. And if we do the maximum of all of this pixel, we will get the maximum number of consecutive dry days, which has occurred over that pixel. In order to check, for an example, if, uh, if we play with this Excel file, uh, for example, if uh, we pour a rain over this pixel as you can see at the end of the day these two pixels experience maximum number of dry days is five okay so if we just pour a rainfall over this pixel just less 10 mm of rainfall so now we can see this 
this pixel become two because there are only consecutive true dry days of this pixel and let's check so over this pixel there is a uh, dry day but there uh, the second day it will become uh, it has a rainfall that means till now it has only one dry day and the third day there is a dry day in the fourth day it's a dry day and in the fifth day it is a rainfall day so that means this pixel has over this five days of rainfall have experienced maximum two days of consecutive no rainfall so this is how this algorithm works and you can uh, read the result uh, you can uh, do this exercise uh, because presently we have uh, performed only for year 2017 so uh, by converting all of this procedure into a uh, a loop or a map function we can apply this particular algorithm over each year or of each set of image and we can see how many maximum dry days can occur or, or uh, occurring over a specific period and also we can uh, use this algorithm for the temperature data set like if you want to see how many number of uh, very hot days like for example more than 40 degree temperature is there over any pixel we can do that analysis also and if we have our own temperature uh, rainfall data set, for example, like future climate data set in the Earth engine, it is not there, but you can convert into the GeoTIFF and import as an image asset and apply this algorithm over that uh, data set also. So, and that's it for the day. I uh, hope you um, understand this algorithm and uh, Feel free to ask any question into the comment box and if you like this video, please share with your colleagues, friends, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.